In this video we're going to show you the steps to creating a man machine chart within Timer Pro. Uh, we're going to start with this situation, one man running two machines. And what we've done is we've basically got the times for the doing the different uh, tasks that the operator might be involved in. So getting the part, loading the part, machine one cycle, unload the part from machine. Same for machine two, get, load, machine cycle, unload. So it's very simple, but regardless whether it's one man running two machines or one man running four machines, the concept is exactly the same. You load it into the uh, the template uh, that comes within Timer Pro. So to show you how to get that template again, we're talking about this template right here in the flowchart area here. So if I just uh, close out of this, so we bring up the, the balance and we do file, import a new manual Excel sheet. And that's going to give you a template that you can take and then you can add your specific uh, data to it here, just like we have over here. Okay, and then once you've got everything loaded, all you do is you send it to the balance. Now all this is going to do is dump it into our balancing module. And it's basically data that we're going to use here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down here, I'm going to hit the right mouse button. I'm going to add multiple tasks. And I want to put those tasks, I want to put three tasks in this case, one for the operator and one for each machine. So it's two machines, so a total of three. I want to put it before the current task and I'm going to name it as other. And I'm going to say machine. And you'll see what it does here. It actually creates space for machine one, machine two, and machine three. Now there is no machine three, so I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to edit this task here. And I'm just going to call this my operator. And uh, you can work with it like this. I happen to prefer to have my operator first over here, so I'm just dragging it across here. So here's my operator, machine one, machine two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use these elements here. To get them into the area that I want, I hit the right button and I say hold task. So what that's going to do is take all the data you see right here and put it into a little box where I can actually start dragging and dropping them. Okay, so here's my activities here. I can size this window any way I want to see everything in one, one spot here. And then I start to define what is actually happening. So the get part from machine eight, machine one, that's the operator. So we grab this and we drag it over and drop it here. I'm then going to hit the right button and I'm going to select a mark here. Now that actually will be, that's an important move here because this will automatically move data around for us. So now after he gets the part, he's going to load the machine. And then he's going to do the machine cycle. But the machine cycle is not the operator, it's machine one. So I grab machine one cycle and I hold it above the mark, the mark being the line drawn across the screen. Above machine one, I drop it. It automatically puts filler. In other words, the machine isn't doing anything until that operator starts it right there. Now, when that machine's running, the operator, of course, can go ahead and get the part from machine two and then load machine two here. And notice that's a little bit higher here. So then the, the machine two cycle is going to begin. So I grab the machine two cycle time. I drag it over on top of machine two above the mark and I drop it and it automatically puts in the filler again here. Now, only then is the operator available to go back and unload the part, part from machine one, get the next part from machine one, and load the part to machine one. And now they can run the cycle again. So I grab again the machine one cycle and I drag it above machine one and above the mark and I drop it right there. Right, so we can start to see a pattern appearing here within a few more moves here. Now we can go back and unload machine two. Notice how the scale is moving every time we do this here. He gets the part for the next part of machine two, he loads it, and then he's going to run machine cycle two. So we drag it up here and drop it again above machine two, above the mark. And there's another filler because the machine has basically stopped waiting for the guy to get back to it now. And now we can unload them, go back to machine one. And he's going to get the part from machine one, load the part, and then we're going to have another machine cycle number one up here. We drop it right there. Now we can go back, unload machine two. He's going to get the part from machine two and load the part to machine two. And then he's going to do the machine cycle. So we take it over machine two, above the mark, we drop it. All right. I'll do it one more time and then you'll see the pattern, uh, very obvious here. Now he's able to, after the machine cycle's running there, he can unload machine one again. He can get the part from machine one and load the part. And then he can do the machine cycle. Now here I've really got all the information I, I kind of need here because you can see it starts to repeat here. 
Now, there's always a stagger at the beginning. When the guy's starting up, he's got to get into a rhythm. But once he's in the rhythm after the first little stagger, I like to call it, then you'll see here, look at this, machine one cycle. The value, it takes uh, 6.4 seconds to run it. The start time is this, the stop time. The important thing here is the cycle time. So one part after the initial stagger, one part is going to come off every 21.1 seconds. And you can see that value occurring again here. So the difference in time between this machine cycle and the one above is in fact 21.1 seconds. And over here you see it's the same, 21.1 seconds. So once he's into the machine cycle, he is going to get one part off of each machine every 21.1 seconds. So this is how you can actually build your uh, your um, your man machine chart here. You can go to the summary as well if you'd like to output this. You can obviously print it out to Yamazumi. So I can pop it out here and that'll dump the data into Yamazumi for me right here. And um, the other one you might want to do is a Gantt chart, which will show up kind of nicely how the data is going to be split out. You can see the guy operate working all the time in the machine being waiting and so forth. And we can export that to Excel and give it a few seconds. And that's going to be out there in Excel for us. It's putting it together over here. And if I shrink this down here, zoom down perhaps to 50%, uh, you can see here, here's the, the operator working and here's the machine waiting. The run time is shown in blue here. Now there is an important feature here. You use the word cycle, C-Y-C-L-E, and that will automatically color code this as being the cycle code time here. So you can see exactly the relationship between the operator and the equipment involved in this particular man machine chart example. Of course when you finish you'd like to do a file, you'd like to do a save balance as, put it into a logical place so maybe you create a, a folder called man machine charts. All right so I can go into my timer pro, I can create a new folder called man machine charts. And I'm going to open that up here and I'd maybe identify what machine it was. So let's just say it was a, uh, a turning machine. Turn machine. One man, two machines. And save that. Just one other point. Uh, the word cycle, you can see it right here, is actually important and also in how the chart is put together here. So for instance, if I keep on doing this, if I view my held, right, so he's just loaded the part to machine one. Now we've got machine cycle. He's going to unload mach machine two now. Now notice when I do this unload and I say get part, so I'm going to drop the get part above here and watch the mark moving. You see it moves and then I load the part and watch the mark move again. So anything I'm dropping on machine, uh, on the operator is actually moving the mark, but yet the one when I bring it over here and I put it up here, I put it above the line and I drop it, it, it doesn't put it right above the previous one, it knows to stay above the line. And the reason it knows to stay above the line is the presence of the word cycle. So this is like a keyword that makes it behave like this. So for instance, if I was to take and make a mistake, like instead of um, unloading machine one now, I would like to look, dump it over here. I dump it over here. Looks what happens. You see? It, it, it put it down below the mark. And the reason it did that was because it lined up with the mark and just put the data right in there. So that's how you can do that. Now if that happens and I do, it looks like a problem here, but watch what happens. If I go get part, load the part, and now I'm going to take the proper machine cycle time and put it above here. Now notice there's a small filler below. If I drop it above the mark, it eliminates that and just no and puts it all in as one total filler. So the word cycle is very important. It's used to know how to behave uh, when you're using the elements above and below the, the marks. And it's also used in the Gantt chart, as you saw in the colouring uh, of the Gantt chart that's printed out to Excel.